Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Happy Purse Day to everyone. You will notice we are in a new area. It is because it's raining outside today and I feel like the cat in the hat where, you know, they're looking out the window and they're saying, you know, it's raining outside, mom's away, we can't go out to play. But today we are still going to play around with pet food and I want to answer some questions um, that you guys had about athletes and the canine athlete and, you know, how do we feed them? We're going to do a food called Inishook. Um, I have a subscriber, actually a couple subscribers that were interested in this food. Um, one in particular feeds this food and sent me the packaging or pictures of the packaging and a bunch of videos and things like that. So we're going to incorporate those today. We're going to have a good time. The one that we got information on today or the one that we're going to be looking at today that was requested was the Inex Shook 3025. And um, for those of you that don't know what those numbers mean, the 30 is the protein, the 25 is the fat. Um, it says it's a complete balanced meal for medium to large breed dogs, very active dogs, working dogs, um, and is a balanced diet designed for high energy endurance to fuel the, the uh, canine athlete. And so I want to jump over to some charts from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition so that we can define what a canine athlete is because the standards um, are very specific. And so what we may think is a canine athlete may not be what the standards are published to. So we want to check that out and make sure that we're properly assessing our, um, our canine athlete. Okay, so this is um, from the textbook listed down below. Um, it's table 18-1. There is a whole section on working dogs and sporting dogs. And so here we're defining what the activity levels are. So exercise type of sprint um, is going to be dogs that do coursing, um, racing greyhounds, whippets, or weight pulling animals. Uh, intermediate is going to be classified um, as physical activity lasting a few minutes to a few hours. So that's going to be the majority of our athlete dogs. So that's agility, border patrol, customs animals, police animals, drug detection, frisbee trial dogs, field trial dogs, hunting, um, our livestock management animals, um, and then search and rescue and other service and tracking animals. And then physical endurance or physical activities um, that last for many hours. And so that's going to be your sled pulling dogs or racing dogs or expedition dogs. And so um, we're going to need this chart or this information to classify animals so that we can then go to our second chart, which is defining the specific and unique nutritional requirements of these animals. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these because it obviously is tailored to the specific type of work that you are trying to feed for. Um, but it does give you an idea um, that when you're purchasing pet food and um, you think maybe your dog is a performance dog, if it doesn't fall into one of those categories, then it's not going to be a performance and you shouldn't be feeding it a performance feed or a feed that performs like a performance feed to that animal. It's going to be over nutrition, over supplementation that's not necessary. And it may be causing you to incur some additional costs that really aren't necessary. And so, um, so you can see this is this chart here is um, breaking it down into the sprint activity animals, what they're going to require in immediate activity levels here, um, the high duration and frequent um, intermediate activities, and then the endurance levels are going to be, you know, over here all the way to the right hand side. And so we're going to try to use these and show the difference between these and our general parameters and see if this food in a shook actually is appropriate for the athlete um, or if it's a more moderate appropriate for everybody diet. So let's ho go back to the website here. And we're going to be using the pet food scoring system. You can follow along with this chart. It will help um, keep us focused and keep us to task at hand. And so we're going to go through the, these parameters and we're going to assign points at the end. What do these points mean? You know, they mean absolutely nothing. They're just to give you an idea so that you can compare foods um, very logically and um, very fairly to one another. This is just a first line approach, right? So there may be other things, especially if you have the canine athlete, that may be important that you also have to factor in. So cost certainly is going to be an issue. Um, and some of the comments previously, um, weight of the food and the amount of food that you have to feed was an issue. And so those things might come secondary. Uh, but this is just a very basic first line approach. We're just going to see if it even meets the minimum basic levels that we want it to meet. And then we can go on and add other things to that number um, that may be also important to us. So we're going to start right here with the guaranteed analysis. 
And these are minimums and maximums. Um, you know, you can call the company, get the dry matter basis and get the exacts. But for this video, since we already have a lot of information that was provided um, to us, we're just gonna go based on the package. Um, we've got 30% minimum, fat 25. We knew that was a 30, 25, said that on the bag. Fiber at 3.5%. Um, and then if you scroll down here, you can see the calcium and the phosphorus, um, calcium at 1.5 and phosphorus at 1.1. Another thing that's going to be important, and you'll notice um, this here and also on some of the other churches, the metabolizable energy. And so what is that? That's the energy density of the food. The normal standards that we um, use on all our other videos that are not for the canine athlete, they need to be around 4,000 because that's the energy density that we're comparing to. If we're not in that, in that range, we've got to do a conversion. Um, and I do have a video on how to do that. You can check out the farmer's dog and the Ollie videos because we had to do the conversion in those. Um, and that conversion is necessary to make the densities equal. But at 4,125, um, the energy density is very similar to your average everyday dog food. So it's not calorically dense as um, you know some people might think that it is because of some of the uh, verbiage that we read earlier. But it's not. It's um, 4,125, which is pretty close to the standard. It is 570. 78 kcals per cup, which is a pretty hefty number there. Um, so you can get a little bit more calories per cup than the average food. Um, but just to note, you do, especially when you're evaluating foods for performance, want to really pay attention to that metabolizable energy. All right, so let's pull up the standards. For the working dog and so you can see here um, if you're doing um feeding this food for a dog that's a sprinter we want that food metabolizable energy to be between three and a half to four and so this would be pretty close for intermediate activity we want between four and five close but we're showing you know we're sh we're shearing a little bit closer to the four as we get up to more intermediate or high duration um, we need closer to four and a half to five and a half, so it's falling a little bit short there. And then when we get up to the endurance, the sledding dogs and things like that, we really want to find a food that's greater than um, six K cows um, metabolizable energy per gram. And so this food will fall short of that. And so now you kind of have an idea to, of how to use this chart. Um, we have our fat here. And so we saw that this food was uh, 25%, it was a 30, 25, 25% fat. Um, so it would be a little bit in excess for our sprinter, but it would be good for our intermediate activity as well um, as our um, intermediate high activity, but it will be a little bit short for our endurance activity, actually quite a bit, quite a bit short. And the endurance animals, they're asking for greater than 75% of the calories coming from fat. A lot of people ask about carbohydrates, specifically on cats. There's not much um, data published for dogs on carbohydrates, but you can see here that they do list um, what carbohydrate level you should have for each of those. And then protein, we do have listed. So again, this was a 30-25 um, for your sprinter. It's going to be a little bit in excess of what is necessary. Um, it will be okay for your intermediate. It will be okay for your high intermediate. Um, and it will be a little bit, well, it'll be, it'll be okay. It'll also be okay for your um, sprint or excuse me, your endurance animal. So we're looking good in that department. So now you guys know how to use the chart um, and you can see kind of what type of uh, athlete this food may be appropriate for. Now the PSS is not really tailored to um, this this particular it's it's tailored more to the general population so we're going to switch over at this point um to our normal chart which is for the regular couch potato or not even couch potato it can just be a regular dog that has some um you know good activity to go for walks every day but they're not doing that type of work so we're not we're not going to say couch potato on this one we're just going to say our everyday at home pet that's not you know a, a severe severely working dog or a severe athlete so let's go ahead and pull this up a little bit bigger so we can see and let's see how it stacks up for our everyday individual because we know a lot of people um, feed this food that maybe don't necessarily need the athletic components okay so 30 is going to be on the high end of protein for your normal dog fat at 10 to 20 is going to be in excess of fat for your regular dog fiber at 3.5 percent is going to be okay so they'll get a point there and then let's go down to the minerals 
Calcium would be an excess for your regular dog and your phosphorus um, will be an excess for your regular dog. So as a regular dog food, um, this is going to only get points for the protein and the fiber, so only two points. I do want to go back and check the chart and see, did they list for the working dog um, calcium and phosphorus? don't think they specifically listed minerals because I don't think that there's a specific mineral requirement. So I think it should, um, yeah, it needs to fall in the regular range for the minerals. So, you know, even for the working dog, the calcium and phosphorus may be a bit in excess, especially, um, you know, we want to make sure that the water consumption's there and there's a lot of strain on the kidneys for our athletes. And so the extra calcium and phosphorus could potentially be a um, downside to this food. Now, as you get higher in your protein, um, if that protein is not processed correctly, you may find yourself with issues with the minerals because um, even if the ingredients are quality, um, if they're not processed in a way um, that is processed in a quality way, you will get a lot of calcium and phosphorus left behind um, when they're trying to ex you know, extrude the protein from um, you know, the whole meat source. All right, so let's continue on our journey. So with the point system, um, you know, we're gonna get two points here, one for the protein and one for the fiber. We're losing it on a few of the parameters. Um, that gets us down to the ingredient list. Uh, first ingredient is chicken meal, and that's because chicken meal is very high in protein. And um, basically, chicken meal is a cooked down version of the of the chicken, um, and it's processed in such a way where it's easy to measure, and you can get a lot of it um, condensed because the ingredient list is based on water weight. So by removing that water weight, um, we're just getting like the pure protein here. And so chicken meal being the first ingredient, and then chicken fat because we talked about how that fat is where the energy is actually coming from, and you can see that by the fat requirements on that chart that we were talking about. We've got some more proteins here with the herring meal and then we get into some of the carbohydrate and energy sources um, with the whole uh, grain corn etc etc. So for the point scoring system again it's not tailored to the athlete. They do get two points because it's not grain free and it's not raw. Now we're moving into the AFCO statement. This is a legal statement, it must be on all packages unless, well, even if it is like a supplement or things like that, it just needs to state that it's a supplement. And so this is a very good way to see what this food um, biochemically was tailored to. And so it says that this food is suitable for all life stages, including large breed puppies. Now they are leaving out whether this food is formulated um, or feeding child. Um, I think that that probably means that it is formulated, so we're going to lose both points there. Um, all life stages is not ideal. Um, it is very difficult to feed both a puppy and an adult at the same time because their requirements are so different. And so legally, um, they're allowed to lump those things together, but ideally, especially if you're tailoring the nutrition for your athlete, um, you want it to be you want it to be specifically to their life stage. And even if you're not tailoring it to your athlete, as a veterinarian, I like to see the correct life stage um, being fed to the correct animal because they are different. Legally, they can feed them to the same, but ideally you want to you know, feed your correct life stage. This even goes further saying that it could also be fed to large breed puppies who have a very specific set of requirements. And you can check out some of my shorts um, that go over those different requirements um, if you want to get a little bit more into that. So they're going to lose two points there on the AFCO statement. So we're up to um, four points, four, five, six points. So two points for the guaranteed analysis, two points for the ingredient list. Oh no, I... Okay, so we're up to four points. So two points for the guaranteed analysis, two points for the ingredient list. We lost two points on the APCO statement just now. Now the feeding guide. This is definitely going to be different depending on um, what type of athlete you're feeding. So please reference the athlete chart. Um, if you're feeding this food to a just a normal dog, um, we're going to see... Okay, you can see it lists in kilograms and pounds, so make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, in the middle is the pound, so we're going to select that. A uh, 20 pound dog roughly has a 363 resting energy requirement. You can use the multiplier of 1.6 if that is something, um, you know, if your pet 
tends to be a little bit on the thinner side and you want to use that multiplier. Most animals that I see in my practice are prone to obesity. They're not very active. And so um, I tend to not use the multiplier and then we can always go up. It's harder to take food away from your pet than it is to add it if you notice they're getting a little bit thinner. Um, so I tend to, to shy towards the 363, but if you're going to use that uh, multiplier of the 1.6, it brings you closer up to like 580. And so they are saying, um, let's see here, how many K cows per cup was listed up here. 578 K cows per cup. So let's grab our calculator. Three quarters of a cup, so 0.75 times, 0.75 times, what is going on with my regulator? 0.75 times 578, it's 433. Um, so okay if you're using that multiplier a little bit must, much if you're shooting for just the plain resting energy requirement. At 1.25 or one and a quarter, 575 is gonna be way too much. And so here we are, uh, here we are at a crossroads. Do we give them the point because they're okay at the lower end, but they're not okay at the higher end. And the lower end is saying that that, I'm assuming, would be closer to the 11 pound dog. And so they're saying at the higher end, that's what they would feed the 22 pound dog. I don't think they get the point here. Um, if they're tailoring to the canine athlete, then that makes sense. But we just said that there are different levels of athletes and it's not one size fit all. Mm. Yeah, I'm not gonna give it a point. I'm not gonna give it the point there. So, you know, I'm not saying this is a bad food. This is a food tailored to a very specific animal set, you know, a very specific animal. Um, and so that's why you have to understand um, the marketing because this is specifically, specifically marketed for an athlete. And as you can see, a lot of the parameters are very appropriate for an athlete. But for your general, you know, at home dog, your regular house pet, um, this food's not gonna be appropriate. It's only gonna bring us to the table four points. Um, and so it's very important that as you're working through foods, and that's what I want you to do, not only do you use the, port, the point system to keep you focused, you also realize um, you know, who we're intending to feed. And that's where conversations with your veterinarian become very you know, important and not just necessarily following my, you know, my advice or advice of other people on the internet. Um, it is about the individual and you know, that's what it's hard to convey sometimes because yes, I am here talking to you guys, um, but you know, we don't have that personal relationship. So definitely take this information and you know, have a, a real conversation with your veterinarian. And I think that's one of the most important take home message of this particular um, food review. Uh, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed. That was Inik Shook and I think their little logo. <laughs> I don't know what you call these things. Leave me a comment down below if you know what you call this, where you stack the rocks like that. I see them all the time when I go hiking. Um, never done them myself, but anyway, I digress. That was Inik Shook. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it made sense. I hope you enjoyed um, learning a little bit about the canine athlete. And I think I'm gonna do another um, video here real soon where we will talk more about the canine athlete. So I hope you enjoyed, like and subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things, and we'll hang out again real soon.